Uh, one of the things that I want to uh, transition to now is over the last couple of days of training camp, we've seen Deion Dawkins miss two days for personal reasons. We've seen Micah High go down. We've seen Ryan Bates go down. Um, you know, we've seen some, you know, concerning injuries that make you take a pause and, you know, get a little worried, things like that. So one of the things that I want to talk about is injury backup plans. If certain players go out, how do the Buffalo Bills pivot? Whether it's they go out now or whether it's they go out, you know, week four or week six, you know, in the season or right now, if a certain player goes down for an extended period of time, how do the Buffalo Bills pivot? I want you guys in the comment section to, to, to let us know your thoughts for each of these players that we talk about. And I don't want to talk about sort of the obvious players, right? If Josh Allen goes down, it's quite simple. Case Keenum is going in. If Devin yes. Singletary gets hurt, it's going to be James Cook and Zach Moss. Uh, if Dawson Knox gets hurt, it's going to be OJ Howard. Uh, so there are some pl- there are some positions that we're just we're going to gloss over because the backup I think is cut and dry. Yep. But there are other positions where I think the backup is not as cut and dry. I want to start with Stephon Diggs. Obviously, Gabriel Davis would slide into the wide receiver one role, but who would slide into the wide receiver two role for Gabriel Davis if Stefan Diggs were to miss significant time this season? Again, the comment section, let us know what you think for each of these players as we sort of dive into the backup plans. Uh, I mean, at this point, assuming he's going to be fine and healthy, I I would kind of say it's maybe going to be Jamison Crowder. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason I said, and Shakir's a good option here as well, because he's always been getting reps inside and out. But to start to start the conversation, Crowder, I like Shakir's future and potential, and I and I love that. But I think initially you gotta you gotta lean towards the vet, right? Um, Kumar will get reps on the outside, but if you're talking about a guy who's a receiving threat, it's probably Crowder, and then you kind of stick with McKenzie um, in the slot where he's been shining throughout training camp. My heart would love for that to be Shakir on the outside, but my brain is telling me at least to start with, it would be Jamison Crowder. He has played on the outside and I know he's not quite as proficient on the outside as he has been in the slot, but he does have experience playing on the outside. So maybe it's a situation where starting out it's Crowder and over time that would would become Shakir um with kumaro mixing in Mm -hmm. maybe a little bit and i think mckenzie would end up manning that slot um but if that were to be the case i do think you would see khalil shakir get plenty of playing time um in either situation but i i'd give the first nod to crowder probably yeah i mean i I would say crowder too because that's where you saw him on the first day of practice right you saw him playing the z receiver uh with the second team Isaiah McKenzie's been taking some reps on the outside. So you might see like some platoons where maybe sometimes it's Jamison Crowder. Sometimes it's Isaiah McKenzie. Obviously Khalil Shakir would get worked in. Jason Taylor comes in and says, Kumaro, really? We saw last preseason and, you know, he's missed a couple of days of practice. Now he's given some of these other guys a, a chance to catch up with him. But really Jake, like Jake Kumaro on the depth chart is Stefan Diggs is legitimate backup. He's the backup X receiver. <laughs> um, you know, he, can move into the inside like Gabriel Davis can and play that big slot role. But really, Jay Kumaro is a, a, a boundary receiver. So I wouldn't discount Jay Kumaro, but I think it would certainly be a lot of mix, ma- uh, mi- you know, mixing and matching, a lot of platooning, um, you know, a lot of sets where maybe the wide receivers are closer to the line of scrimmage. Definitely something we don't want to happen this season randy comes in and says judge is a big fan of Tavon. if you can't tell it'll be really interesting to see I, I, i'm on record saying i don't think the dude's got a shot to make the roster unless he's the best kicker punt returner and we keep seven wide receivers i don't think there's a chance in hacky makes the team but i mean like i i, I don't know Dan, what are your thoughts on Tavon austin because like the dude's just done nothing in this league and he's not magically going to be turned into a good player just because he, you know, came to the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I mean, it's it I mean it's no disrespect, but it's going to sound like it. But he's been an afterthought to me mm-hmm. for me, right? He's been really been an afterthought for me. I haven't really um, considered him much in my sort of um, 
you know, analysis or, or projections necessarily to make the team. <laughs> and he says, can't wait for Austin <laughs> to make the 53 hour. Right. And we're going to get these like cut up clips of us just sounding like idiots, but <laughs> I, I just don't see it. Right. I don't see it. And, and like you said, I think unless he can come in an outright, just outclass everyone else, not just at kick return, but doing both. Mm -hmm. I, I think he has to do both. Right. That's it. it. He would be valuable to this team if he could do both and he could do it well. But I just something tells me that it, that's that's not mm -hmm. going to be how how this thing goes. And it could be something where as camp goes on, maybe there are injuries and in, in this changes yeah. or something. But as of right now, it, it's a big uphill battle, I would say. Yeah. And and, and Jessica Tennis comes in and says, you know, in my opinion, we're keeping seven wide receivers, only nine in the defensive line. You know, I've, I've made that comment before. We're going to get to position battles after this segment. I feel like that's Marquez Stevenson's only shot is to impress as a kick and punt returner and be the seventh wide receiver. That's probably Tavon Austin's path to the roster as well. But Chris Janke made a great point and said maybe Tavon Austin, you know, is fighting for a spot on the practice squad. That makes sense too because you can keep veterans on the practice squad. So if the Buffalo Bills feel like, all right, we're comfortable with Isaiah McKenzie being the slot receiver, you know, we're comfortable with him returning punts and we're going to have James Cook or Khalil Shakir return kicks. We feel comfortable with this balance that we have. We're going to roll with it. We'll cut Tavon Austin, but we'll make him one of the veterans on the practice squad. You know, Isaiah McKenzie gets hurt. Jamison Crowder becomes your nice go slot receiver. Tavon nice Austin insurance. then takes the gadget role in the kick and punt returner role. So, I think that, you know, now that you can keep veterans on the practice squad, a guy like Tavon Austin makes a heck of a lot of sense, and he's getting rep after rep after rep and knows the playbook um, because he's with the Bills throughout training camp. Next guy I want to talk about here was Deion Dawkins. Missed two days for personal reasons. He's back. He missed some time last year. If Deion Dawkins goes down, <laughs> what do the Buffalo Bills do? Do they – slot in a Tommy Doyle, a David Questenberry. Do they shuffle Spencer Brown over? What do you think the Buffalo Bills do if Deion Dawkins were to go down for a significant amount of time this season? Um, And I'll just preface this by saying that these, like there was no, there was no uh, collusion here. So I don't know what your answer is going to be on this, but I, it's Questenberry for me right now. I, I mean, it has to be, I, mm -hmm. I don't think you can, well, with Spencer Brown, Spencer Brown didn't exactly perform great last year at left tackle, and I know they did move him over there. But if you move him over to left tackle, what are you going to do at right tackle? Is it Quesenberry going to play right tackle, and then you're going to shuffle two positions? I don't know. It, that's a tough one for me. I think um, Jim is right. It's probably Brown or mm -hmm. Quesenberry are, are probably the leaders in the clubhouse to take that job. At this point, I wouldn't trust Tommy Doyle to do it and yeah i mean I, it is von miller but all i've heard about tommy doyle i love tackle so far in training camp is von miller worked him <laughs> so it, it would be questenberry or um you know or or mm -hmm. spencer brown shuffling over uh dark horse maybe uh we're going to uh maybe maybe we bring back daryl williams and, <laughs> and maybe oh. hit, slide him over at right tackle and put spencer yeah brown yeah so um or it, could Cody Ford get it? No, I'm just kidding. I'm could, just kidding. <laughs> could, could, could Rick Bates go to left tackle? Um, now that's an interesting thought. That is an interesting hmm. thought. Jessica Tennis says, listening to the Dawkins interview, it is Doyle. He thinks the world of both him and Spencer Brown. Um, uh, I put in my notes here. I think if Dawkins were to go down in the game, in game, I think it'd be David Questenberry. But I think if it was an extended injury, three, four weeks, I think that Questenberry would man the right side. And I think that, they would shift Spencer Brown over yeah. to let it, if it's a one week thing. All right. He Dion's going to be out this week or Dion's going to be out for the rest of the game. Questenberry. But if it's an extended amount of time, that makes sense. I think the Buffalo bills would move Spencer Brown over to left tackle and they would make Questenberry the right. And Tommy Doyle would still be there as your depth uh, swing tackle. The next guy, and this is the guy that I'm, I'm starting to get a little bit worried about because there's so many injuries to the offensive line that he's not getting the veteran rest day that some of these other guys have been getting. And that's Mitch Morse. Uh, mm. Mitch Morse, you know, he's had a history of injuries uh, in the past. If Mitch Morse were to go down this season, what do the Buffalo Bills do? 
I mean, at this point, right? It's Greg Mance. I mean, he's is he the only like other true center that we have? I mean, I could see maybe them trying to put Rick Bates there. I don't know, man. I think Greg Mance would would just step in and be the guy right now. If I like, if you, if you had to tell me who it was going to be, it'd probably be Greg Mance, and then they would just leave the rest of the offensive line as is. Mm-hmm. That that would be my guess, like, assuming. Everyone else, all the other starters are healthy, right? So you'd have Dawkins, Saffold, Mance at center, Bates mm-hmm. at right guard, and Brown at right tackle. I think that could make sense. The only alternative I see to that is potentially moving Bates into center and maybe bringing in a guy like Questenberry at right guard, or maybe a guy like Greg Van Roten makes the team and he comes in at right guard. Um, so <laughs> Chris Judge about to drop. A... I like Chris Stetter, but I think he's got an uphill climb as well. It'll but, be, uh... it'll be uh, Jacob Capra. Uh, I I put in my show notes here. I put it would be Greg Manx in a game, maybe Greg Manx for the same thing. Like if it's just one week, but I think if it was a month, I think if it's six weeks, I think you're talking about Ryan Bates sliding over to center and the Buffalo Bills filling in, you know, Cody Ford or David Questenberry or whoever is the next man up at guard, whether Greg Van Roten, whoever ends up uh, yep. being. But, uh, yeah, uh, Adam, Katie, we're with you. We are all nervous if anyone goes down on this offensive line. So hopefully we're healthy by week one and then nobody gets hurt. But obviously that's not the reality of the NFL, and that's why we're sort of going through this exercise here. And the next man up, again, Von Miller goes down like we it's 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 Rousseau, it's Epinesa, it's Basham. We know what's gonna happen. If Ed Oliver goes down, it's Tim Settle, it's Jordan Phillips, we know what's gonna happen. Even if Matt Milano goes down, it's gonna be Terrell Bernard. Like he's the guy getting the work as the backup weak side linebacker. You know, he's getting all those Milano comps when he was drafted. So the next guy I have up here is Tremaine Edmonds, right? Like if Tremaine Edmonds goes down, Mike linebacker, you know, and that that responsibilities that he has it's a little bit different than the weak side linebacker that matt milano plays tyrell dotson is an option terrell bernard is an option what do you think happens if Mm -hmm. tremaine edmonds goes down for a significant portion of time well i think based out of the camp reports so far that it would be dotson Mm -hmm. um he's getting some some pretty good uh reviews i would say for his performance so far in camp manning that third sort of linebacker spot when they do pull in the uh the classic sort of four three um and he's been playing well by all reports from some of the beat guys read in um in joe b's article must have been either today or yesterday about tyrell tyrell dodson so i think right now it'd be dodson i think that the bills would maybe like to get to a point where they could have bernard play either position as mm-hmm. Randy says here, the only um, only middle linebacker answer, he's the heir apparent. I think they would want Bernard to maybe be the the kind of backup to both Edmonds and Milano mm-hmm. uh, in an ideal situation. But I think yeah. it would be hard to ignore Dodson's play so far, at least through a week of practice. So, um, and given he's a vet and he's played some defensive snaps for the Bills before when there have been prior injuries. I would give the edge to Dodson right now, but like, I kind of like how you've been Mm. sort of assessing this where you'd say like, okay, if it was a game, maybe Dodson, if it's, if it's multiple weeks, uh, maybe Bernard. Right. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of maybe where my head's leaning with this one as well. So in my notes, I had in game Tyrell Dodson, multiple games, a Dodson Bernard platoon where Dodson maybe gets the early down works. Bernard makes sense. The third down work. But Jim Wickens comes in the great comment, like, who has the green dot? Because if you want, if you want Tyrell Dotson and Terrell Bernard to platoon, you're gonna have to take the green dot away. Who gets the green dot? Do you give the green dot to? And for those who don't know, the green dot is the the person who 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 hears Leslie Frazier, the person who you know calls the Buffalo Bills defensive calls. Do you give it to one of the safeties? Do you give it to Hyde or Poyer? Do you give it to Matt Milano? So the question then becomes. Who takes maybe the green dot if Tremaine Edmonds goes down? Because right now it is Tremaine Edmonds. So if Dodson has the green dot, you're probably going to want to have Dodson on the field like most of the time. Most of the time. And then (laughs) that kind of maybe sort of takes away from him platooning with Terrell Bernard. So I'm starting to second guess myself here uh, with that comment from Jim Wickens there. As for who's had the uh, green dot at training camp, 
Eric reported Tyrell Dotson's had it with the second team. I believe I saw Terrell Bernard had it with the second team. And Balon Spector, I think I even saw, was um, had it with the second team as well. So they've been mixing and matching sort of who's had the green dot on the special teams. I can't give you a clear and concise answer over uh, who has had it the most or the majority of the time. I would assume Tyrell Dotson. Uh, next man on my list. I think it's pretty easy. Like Trey White is obviously we've, we've been questioning back and forth whether Trey White can, you know, go. But it's Dane Jackson. It's Kyir Elam. We could go into the weeds of if one of those guys goes down before Trey White is back, who who, who jumps in. But my guess is it would probably be uh, Nick McLeod. But I want to get to Teron Johnson here because I think mm-hmm. he is a guy we don't talk about enough. I talked about like Cam Lewis is mostly a nickelback. He could play the boundary. He plays special teams. But he's mostly known as being a nickel cornerback. And I made this comment on Twitter. I was like, man, how many – nickel cornerbacks do you want to keep on your football team and someone made the great point like what if teron johnson goes down so if teron johnson goes down for an extended period of time what are the buffalo bills looking at how could they possibly pivot to fill that nickel cornerback position where do you think they turn well i'll tell you this and as of right now, I don't know that he's going to make the roster, but I think mm-hmm. in an in-game situation, you probably wouldn't have any choice but to put Saran Neal there. Knowing that he was going to be, if he was going to be out for multiple games, that's why you put a guy like Cam Lewis on your practice squad in that situation for him to come up and and man that show uh, for multiple games. I'm not a huge proponent of Saran Neal playing like a multitude of defensive snaps. <laughs> I do like that looked, idea. Apparently he's looked better. And apparently okay, that that's apparently the that bar is low his, though. The bar apparently that was part of his contract was that he gets played defense more. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, okay. That's, that's fine. <laughs> um, I, I would still trust Cam Lewis a little bit more. I like mm-hmm. the idea of Bernard maybe getting some run in, in maybe like early down situations. I don't know that I'm ready to trust Bernard fully yet. I'm passing down some situations as a true nickel corner when he's more of a, more of a linebacker uh, just from experience standpoint. Um, so that's why I'm going to go with what Chris Jenke saying here. Mm. And what I said earlier, I think in game you'd go with Saran Neal multiple games, Cam Lewis, you put Cam Lewis on your practice squad to call him up in, in a situation like this and put whatever guy you like yeah. in that. And for me, it'll be Cam Lewis right now, but I don't think you want to use a 53 man roster spot mm-hmm. on Cam Lewis on the chance that Ter- 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 yeah. Johnson is, uh, is hurt during. So the game. last year, the Buffalo bills faced this situation. Teron Johnson missed a game, the Houston Texans game. Saran Neal filled in for him the previous game. And then Cam Lewis was called up from the practice squad and performed admirably. And then Teron Johnson came back and Cam Lewis. I don't know if he went back to the practice squad or he was, he stayed on the 53 man. I have to go double check that, but I believe he went back to the practice squad. So, Cam Lewis is an obvious choice. Obviously, Saran Neal will be the in-game choice. Damar Hamlin has taken nickel reps before. You know, we talked about that when we talked about him at Pittsburgh, how he was position versatile. He could play safety. He could play nickel. If something were to happen to Teron Johnson where it's a long-term injury, uh, Steve Burns brought up the the comment about maybe mixing in some Terrell Bernard in some certain packages. I think you're going to see that against uh, teams like New England and stuff. Uh, Not as a nickel corner, but as that that extra guy on the field going a little bit more base with a lighter linebacker. But we talked about this a little bit last year. Like I wouldn't be surprised, right? We, we have been sort of uh, incubating Josh Thomas, DeMar Hamlin, Jaquan Johnson. We've been incubating these safeties here and developing them for a number of years. And they even talked about in training camp, working in Jaquan Johnson and DeMar Hamlin and these guys in with the starters to give Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde a breather. If Teron Johnson were to suffer an injury where he's going to miss five, six weeks, could maybe we could possibly see a situation where Micah Hyde slots into the nickel spot and Jaquan Johnson or DeMar Hamlin move to free safety? That could be something you could see if there was a long-term injury to Teron Johnson. Because I do think that these safeties have value They just never see the field because of what's in front of them. So that should be interesting because you mentioned it's not worth rostering Cam Lewis. But at one point, does Cam Lewis pull a Dean Marlowe and say, I got no future here? Yeah, you waved me. I'm going to go on someone else's practice squad or I'm going to go to someone else's active roster. 
uh, because his name has popped up enough in reports that I think he would have some interest around the league and he might decide to cut bait with the Buffalo Bills if the Buffalo Bills decide to cut bait with him. So um, that'll be something super interesting to look, to keep an eye out on. And then the last thing I had on my list here was Micah Hyder, Jordan Poyer. And the reason why I said that is, is I think the guy might be different depending on who gets hurt, right? I think if Micah Hyde goes down, it's DeMar Hamlin. I think if Jordan Poyer goes down, it's Jaquan Johnson. I almost feel like maybe, you know, Jaquan is more the strong safety. Hamlin's more the free safety. I know they're split safety, so they share responsibilities. But if, you know, Micah Hyde or Jordan Poyer were to go down, who do you think is that first safety off the bench? Yeah, I kind of view it the opposite. I kind of view Jaquan more as the the center fielder, uh, more of the back direct back up to Hyde. And, and I see Hamlin more as the guy that, maybe can be more of a replacement for Jordan Poyer um, and maybe play a little bit, you know, down closer to the box. And, and as you mentioned, getting some of those nickel reps, so kind of down closer to the box. So while I don't disagree on those guys being backups, I would kind of flip them. I would have probably mm-hmm. Jaquan, Jaquan be in my mind, the kind of more of the direct backup to Hyde, And I would have Hamlin being more of the direct backup to, uh, to Poyer. 